Home Life and Style is brought to you by the Pine Hills, offering inspired new homes and daily adventures just 45 minutes from Boston. Ethan Allen, every detail matters. Longfellow Design Build, architect and builder for Cape Cod and beyond. Snow and Jones, a fixture in New England homes since 1952. And by Classic Tile and Stone, your tile and stone destination. Hi, I'm Parker Kelly. Welcome to Home Life and Style. I am passionate about design, food, and travel. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, and sharing who they are, how they live, and what they love. In each episode, I'll introduce you to a new destination through the eyes of the people who call it home. Join me as we celebrate these towns, these people, these homes in style. Today I'm on my way to the quintessential New England town of Wellesley, Massachusetts. Part of Greater Boston, Wellesley is only about 15 miles or so from the city and definitely has its own personality and style. Wellesley has a population of about 30,000. It's also home to Wellesley College as well as the private business school Babson College. Wellesley has a lovely and vibrant town center. In fact, Wellesley Square has more than 100 shops, eateries and businesses. I'm on my way to meet homeowners Susan and Jim in their four-bedroom, 3,000-square-foot, renovated 1938 Royal Barry Wells Cape. The home is located in a part of town known as Wellesley Hills. The couple, who are both originally from Boulder, Colorado, have been in the home for 11 years. They live here with their teenage son, Alex, and their adorable golden doodle dog, Elway. Jim was an aerospace engineer and environmental engineer and worked at DreamWorks Animation and now does finance. Susan was a costume designer and doll stylist for Mattel and other companies and is now an interior designer at Interiology Design Company. I'm going to meet these homeowners, tour their home, explore their town, and then a chef and I are going to cook up a dinner and celebrate home, life, and style in Wellesley Hills, Massachusetts. <laughs> there she is. Hi, there she hi. is. Hi, 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 hi. Nice to nice see you. See you. <laughs> so, where should we go first? I think we should start in my office. Okay, let's start. Okay. <laughs> You're putting me to work already? <laughs> I'm going to start in your office? This is my home office. Uh -oh. um, awards. Yeah. <laughs> those are beautiful. Two of those are for my kitchen, and uh, other ones are for jobs that we've done through the design firm. We have a design studio, and I'll go in there one or two days a week, but mostly I work from home. In this quiet neighborhood, I can see why you yeah. would like the, yeah. the serenity of this workspace. So, so one of the things you told me is that you have a home that's filled with stories. And I love that. I'm all about the story. And so I would love you to tell me about the story of these. My previous career was as a stylist. I did Barbie and different toys. So I did a lot of the collector dolls and Robert Best was the, uh, really the pin pinnacle. He was the best, <laughs> yes. He kindly gave me that print and then I collected a few more. You know, who would know driving through this quiet, beautiful neighborhood behind this Royal Barry Wills home. It's such a story. And oh, I'm sure there's a story here too. Yes. So we went to Indonesia. Um, Jim has a cousin who uh, lives in these far flung places. These were very popular. And I thought, well, I do dolls. I need a doll, right? I couldn't live without one. And I only do you had ever move her? Uh, yeah, sure. You can move her. There's a part of me that yes. is feeling kind of. Puppet showy? Yeah, I don't know, Mr. Roger. -y. <laughs> there are a lot of toys in our house. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yay! <laughs> Talk to me about this space before we move into the whole um, mudroom slash kitchen area. So I have a good friend who was in Connecticut, and we actually met her in Connecticut, um, but she used to collect all this antique glassware in China, and she had given me all of these crystal goblets with the gold going around them. Mm. 
than the ones on the top. My parents collected when they were in um, Italy. Oh, I can almost hear this. Yes. I can almost yes. hear it. And I, <laughs> it just makes me happy to walk through here because it reminds me. It reminds me of, of friends, you know, friends, family. I mean, really, what's life about if it's not about that? Right. The business that you do, you're all about kitchens. I mean, you do a lot of kitchen design. We do. So we do full interiors, but we specialize in kitchens and baths. This is gorgeous. Now, is this the, the kitchen design that you won the award for, too? Yes. Yeah, I uh -huh. can see why. Yeah. Tell me about this material here. So this is a natural stone called quartzite. This is really popular right now. Beautiful. The veining is just gorgeous. Yeah, and a great chandelier. Wow. Oh, thanks. That's, that's a neat piece. Yes. So funny, my, my husband likes bling, which is nice for me. <laughs> yes, yes. And then the trash, like if your hands are messy, mm -hmm. then it has a little drive in there, oh, a okay. little motor, oh, which I good. thought was going to be silly yeah. until I got it. And now I use it all the time. And Everybody so you uses just, it. You kick it open. How does it open? Um, you just bump it. Oh, that's awesome. And then we build in the dishwasher. Oh, <laughs> knock three times <laughs> on the ceiling if you three want times me. Three times, that one will open for you. Uh -huh. yes. So one of the other things we do a lot is we do upgraded drawer boxes instead of doing the plain maples. It beckons to open the drawers because they're so beautiful inside. <laughs> <laughs> and so soft clothes. Yeah, that's always nice. And so this is a second office, oh, and a sewing this is machine? This. Right. So oh. as my husband likes bicycles, I always like sewing machines. So my previous career, I was a stylist. Again, I like to have things around that just bring back happy memories, right? And I pulled out some of my things that I had done that remind me of fun stuff. So this is my master. Mm. Uh, for a home that's not oversized. You still have all of the sweet spaces. Yeah. Very neat. And that's your master bath. Can master I peek bath. in there too? Sure, if you want to go in there. I do. Is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> so this is our master. We redid this when we moved into the house about 10 years ago. Well, have tell me about your stone. Uh, so this is limestone, limestone. Um, and it's sealed with a beeswax actually. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much no maintenance. And that handle's a little bling for the shower. Yeah. I love it. This one's got a really nice styling. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think everything has to go together because it goes together. No. You oh, know? no. Mix it's it actually up. much more interesting. Yeah. Mix it totally. up. Totally. I try to mix up modern with traditional a little bit, too. After the home tour, Susan's colleagues from Interiology, Mark, Louie, and Jay, stopped by. They were responsible for this award-winning kitchen, and I was looking forward to talking with them. Your business is a, a full service interior design, Correct. but but you f focus on kitchen and bath? Oh. We're certified by the National Kitchen and Bath Association. Mark and I did several levels of certification, and um, so we're different than other firms because we can do everything. We will mix a lot of things, like mm -hmm. we'll put the natural stone here mm -hmm. and then put a, I um, love the mixing. a quartz product on the side so that you don't have to worry about stains and things, or we do the reverse, and we just really try to mix things up. Right, or you take a traditional kitchen and yes. yet there's modern counter stools. Yeah, and I love how clear they are, and I love how the, the, they hide. Yeah, they just kind of disappear, disappear. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about we talk about when we walked through and we had these um, stations? Now, is that is that just Susan, or do you no, all no, believe in all a good like station? Um, not every client has a dog, so they don't all need the dog station, and not all clients have kids, so the snack station isn't as important, and in other cases, it's very important. So, really, your business is. Uh, half about really just being able to listen and understand who the people you're designing for Absolutely. are Definitely. and how they yeah. really live. What their lifestyle Harder. is and what their needs are, how they function on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we bring to the table is that we are a very transparent company. People know what they're getting up front, what they're getting all the way through the process, and we work so organically with the client that there's never any surprises. And we don't like to say, this is our style. We try to build Yes. Still, the style of the client, what they like, and then only better. It's influenced by all of your knowledge, but it's, it's theirs. The owners of Riverbend & Company provided the appliances for Susan and Jim's beautiful kitchen. I also had a chance to talk with them a little bit about their business. 
Well, we started the business about 11 years ago, and uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different versus just being the typical type of um, you know setting for appliances and cabinetry. So our venue is really about um, beautiful kitchens where the appliances can really shine. They're all built in at all different price points. We have a full meal kitchen that's live, a Viking kitchen that's live, some wolf appliances that are live. And we do hold like cooking uh, classes, you know, for clients who, you know, really want to get a sense of what the appliances are really all about, you know, how do they perform. It's important to have not only the appliances on display, but have them live so we can really, you know, give them a sense of what they're buying. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's called River Bend. And Company. Yep. And Company. I'm yes. And company. <laughs> oh, you're, <laughs> you're the River Bend and you're the And Company. Love it. Jim and Susan love traveling. They've been collecting masks from all over the world for 25 years, including places like Kenya, Egypt, and the Ukraine. They showcase them on their living room walls. Later in the day, I met up with Jim and Susan at the Gardens at Elm Bank, which are part of the Massachusetts Horticultural Society. This 36-acre historic estate fosters an appreciation for plants and the environment through its many gardens, workshops, classes, and year-round special events. Jim and Susan are thankful that this beautiful resource is always here for them to enjoy. <laughs> I've got joy to share with you in my arms Just a little hug every day will solve your problems. I've got love to share with you in my pocket. Just a little kiss on the lips and we'll skyrocket. We go. worked long and hard, built a career, a life, knowing that one day, with a little luck, you'll have time. At Longfellow Design Build, we design and build new homes, new kitchens, New additions to your home. We handle everything from conception to completion. Working in unison with you, for you, so you can have the home you envision, so you can have the home you deserve, so you can focus on what's important. Longfellow Design Build, architect and builder for Cape Cod and beyond. The next day, Susan and Jim took me to one of their favorite dog walking places, Centennial Reservation Trail. While Susan walked Elway, Jim and I headed out for a ride on the trails. Jim pulled out his custom fat tire for this occasion. I was impressed. Before the party, I met David Becker, one of my favorite restaurateurs, at one of his three restaurants, Juniper in Wellesley. Nice to see you yeah, again. Good to see you too. Thanks for coming. Uh, Chef David Becker, um, honestly, uh, you've got a lot going on, and we're cooking again together, which is yeah, really nice. Yeah, we can get together and not learn anything again. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's talk about this restaurant for anyone who doesn't know this restaurant. Um, talk about your cuisine. I'd say it's like quasi Middle Eastern. You know, that's kind of how it evolved. What is the thing on the menu that people won't let you get rid of? Oh, there are a couple. <laughs> One we're making tonight. Oh, okay. What yeah. are we making the, tonight? The chicken schnitzel. It's oh. like a pounded out chicken God breast. God bless you. Yeah, no, it's good. Gavina <laughs> <laughs> <Kavina> schnitzel. <laughs> 
And so uh, let's talk about your other restaurant. So Sweet Basil is a BYO. I've had it for about 18 years now. It's kind of really kind of crazy when I think about it. We make all of our own pasta in house and you know, it's just kind of like the whole neighborhood smells like garlic and tomato sauce. And, yeah, so that's a nice restaurant too, but you also have another one coming now. Yes. Yes. And what's the name? <laughs> Balani. Almost at the same time, you just took on a, a yeah, baby. Yeah, I just started. <laughs> I a, mean, starting a I family mean, at the, you know. Maybe another book. I mean, how many books do you have? Two, soon to be three. Two, soon and to be three. And the third one is like, I think, on a boat on its way here now. So three books, yeah. a baby. Yeah. Three restaurants, and we're gonna cook tonight. Yes, is this is gonna be great. And thanks for adding that onto your plate. Should we go get some cheese? Yeah, let's go down to Wasix and get some cheese. Cheers. <laughs> After our conversation filled with giggles, David took me to Wasix, a popular neighborhood and family business since 1964, offering specialty food, wine, and the finest cheese. Just a short walk from Juniper, owners Brad and his mother Carol, fondly known as the Cheese Mama, couldn't have been more friendly or welcoming, sending us out with bags of the delights for the party. just about the fixtures. Snow and Jones, the family-owned business that contractors and homeowners on the South Shore and Cape Cod have depended on since 1952. The overall aesthetic of the Pine Hills has a quality that's, that's very high. I mean, when you first started walking the the, the grounds, the landscaping, you said it has to be spectacular because the, the land is spectacular. Well, the, the land is spectacular and it, it starts with trying to see where the land is telling us to build. Uh, we are crafting the right location for, for the home to sit and to view that woods or water or uh, mm -hmm. a beautiful tree or the horizon or even the ocean and our job is to try and utilize the grade and the trees to create that kind of privacy so that as one moves from neighborhood to neighborhood and sometimes even from home to home that there are these pieces of nature that frame your view or change the way in which you perceive the homes that you're seeing. I've worked with Christian and Julie for about seven years now, about 30 projects. They care as much as I do about the finished product. And every time I walk in, I'm always like, girls, what do we have new? And they always have things set aside to show me. And it, every time I go there, it's so exciting. They text me pictures as soon as tile comes in that they think is really exciting. Like, uh, even on a Saturday, I'll get a text. And they'll know that I'm just as excited to see it as they are to share it. And so they're, they're my go-to. Recognized and respected. Classic tile and stone on Boston's South Shore. When I got back to the house, Millie from White Moss and Twigs was busy making the table look beautiful. Her artisan style and reputation for wildly romantic designs were simply amazing. And so, the guests arrive. <laughs> you remember TJ from The Urban Grape, of course, the because it's the only one. I'm so glad you are joining me in yet another episode of Home Life and Style. Are you excited to be in Wellesley? I am so excited to be in Wellesley right now. I'm excited to make a great cocktail tonight. So what do, what do we call this? Yeah, so a lot of people drink Manhattans, and that's typically a bourbon drink with red vermouth, bitters, and cherry. Uh, I'm gonna do a play on that called the Perfect Manhattan. So first you have your ice, and then we're gonna do the whiskey, and we have our jigger here and I'm gonna double the recipe just so I can make two cocktails in one, okay? So I'm gonna do one and a half times two, so three ounces. And then what the trick is to a perfect Manhattan is that you're doing not only the white and red vermouth, but you're going a little bit heavier. So vermouth is wine-based, and so it's just really gonna soften the alcohol from the whiskey. So we're gonna do about an ounce 
of white and an ounce of red. Okay. Bitter is really lighten it up. It's like adding that extra dash of salt or extra dash of pepper uh, to your dish. So we're just doing a couple. So we're going to stir it. Just like James Bond. You're gonna end up with a finished cocktail that's round and creamy on your palate. It's a gorgeous color. It's a great color. And then cherry. Mm -hmm. so drop that that's in there. Really good. Put that there, and then I'm gonna just take my bartender's knife, and I'm just gonna cut a little twist on there. We're gonna give it a little twist right here. And what that does, it lets all the orange oils get in there. And then you see bartenders kind of rub the rub front, it. rub the glass. Mm -hmm. I'd like to introduce you and cheers you to the Parker Kelly Perfect Manhattan. <laughs> cheers. cheers. While David and Angel set up in the kitchen, I took the opportunity to check out Jim's bike collection, where he has several custom bikes. His grandfather had a bike shop in Boulder, and Jim raced as a teenager. It's an extreme passion of his. He even does a bike tour in Europe every summer. I'm glad to steal you away while the chef's doing all of his things upstairs and everyone's starting to get that hustle and bustle. Yes. And this is the bike room. Yeah. It is the bike room. So this is, this is my racing bike. Okay. And um, you, you gotta lift it. I have to and lift you, it because it's yeah. super light? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh wow. You could pack that in your suitcase and Isn't it would be... It? It's amazing. It would make it right I on love the plane. It. So I, I'd always wanted a Pinarello, which is an Italian brand. And um, so a few years ago, I thought, well, why not? Uh, this actually was an interesting bike that I got when I was working with um, the Australian Olympic team in 1984. Oh, goodness. Uh, they were training in Colorado. I had spent a, uh, a little time with the Italian team also, and they had an extra bike, so I ended up buying that. What I uh, think is interesting is your wine cellar right off your bike room. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's kind of interesting too. Yeah, somehow with Italian racing bikes, it seems like you gotta have wine. We have an, too, right? we get a lot of Italian <laughs> wines in there too. So. Isn't that cool? Of course, Susan and Jim aren't the only ones with serious hobbies. This family is interested in everything and busy following their passions. The couple's son, Alex, an Eagle Scout and varsity sports player, among other things, was proud to show me his Bitcoin operation and gaming room. This is a cool room. And what do we call this room? Um, I don't have a name for it. I don't know. We just call it the man cave. Oh, oh the man cave. All right, cool. How many of your friends can actually play with you? I uh, occasionally have a lot of friends down here. Wow, it must get pretty intense here. Yeah, oh, it does. It gets very loud. There's a lot of food, and we got the speakers going and the music. And so you like building things too? A lot, yeah. I really enjoyed science, technology, and as you can tell, I really enjoyed Legos when I was younger. Are you thinking of any careers at this point? Um, I'm hoping to go into engineering. Just sort of something I really enjoy. So, and and with the parents you have and the interests they have, yes, and their backgrounds, it seems like you're you're, prim you're primed for a pretty good career, whatever it is, right? Pretty cool, dude. I don't know. Do you do that? What do you do? Sure. What do 16 year olds do now? Uh, that's that's pretty. That's normal. all right. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Hi, I'm David. Hi, Hi David. Fran. Hi, Fran. Welcome to Ethan Allen, Aiden. We're very excited to show you our transformation from winter to spring. Park, if you want to freshen up your room. I do. Or even just lighten and brighten it up for spring. There's no need to buy everything new. Just change it up with accessories. Absolutely. Yes. So, Parker, this is the winter look. Mm. Warm and cozy. Yes, but it's spring. Yes, so let's change it up. And there you go, Parker, just like that, winter to spring. Just like that, perfect. Looking for more inspiration? You can find it in the pages of South Shore Home Life and Style. Beautiful imagery and thoughtfully curated stories showcasing fine home design and decor, top area restaurants, boutiques, arts, culture, and more. It's the lifestyle magazine celebrating the seaside communities south of Boston. Join seasoned editor Maria Allen and her talented team as they reveal the many reasons this region is such a special place to live, work, and visit. Available on newsstands now. To subscribe, visit SouthShoreHomeLifeAndStyle.com. Let's talk about what we're doing with the, with the chef. It's so nice to have you back there. Thank you. Yeah. I like it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and uh, so uh, tell me what we're doing and how you're 
tor right. torturing me. I, I've already, I see it coming. <laughs> right down Fifth Avenue. We're gonna do a couple of things. As soon as I saw the black dress, I thought we, we had to roll out some floury dough <laughs> and make some some flatbread. So at Juniper, one of the main things that we do is we have um, like fresh made pita. You know, a lot of places might bake it, but we actually cook it almost similar to a crepe or like a Okay, a in a pan. Cake. Yeah. With a little oil? Yeah, mm. a lot of oil. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of the za'atar. So I have one trick to get it from one, one place to another is if you fold it up into this and then when you bring it over and I'm gonna un unfold it. That's a great trick. Yep. Starting to bubble. Yeah, it's starting to bubble. Does that mean that mean we should check it? Uh, yeah, I mean we can peek at it. All right. So, so this really is like carnival fried dough, and naan, and homemade pita. How do you know which to call it? So they're very similar. All right, it's almost like a, uh, you know, like pita and pizza are so close together that they almost were like invented by two two brothers that couldn't decide on yeah. what it was going to be. So one of the dishes tonight we're gonna do uh, like a chicken cutlet. We've been calling it the schnitzel. So I'll do one side and then you do the other. And let me warn you, it's kind of like shooting pool. If you, it's like if you have the ball close to the pocket, you don't want to go too hard because it'll it'll miss. So if you go too hard with this, you'll break it. So then you start off. Oh God! <laughs> Listen to that golf thud. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Great. I've been chi I've been chi I've been chicken drumming since I was a wee <laughs> lad. <laughs> All right. So the next course we're gonna do is uh, homemade falafel. And use fresh chickpeas soaked in cold water. Mix it with just fresh mint and garlic and like lemon juice and a lot of the. And that's what's bacon. in this. Yeah. If you get your hand wet, it won't it won't stick to it. And then you can make it into like a nice round ball. High five. <laughs> <laughs> This wine, Domaine de Pelican, is called Trois et Pache. Um, so it's a three blend. This is clean. There's not bacteria in here. Besides the flavor of the wine, which I think is great, and it's gonna go really well with chef's food tonight, both the first and the last course. Um, stylistically, you know, we still have these warm days. This is a light-bodied, refreshing wine, but you can geek out a little bit. You can get into it if you need to. Other than that, it's quaffable, and I have more bottles, so quaff away. We have um, the quinoa falafel that we were making earlier, and we have the rolled out pita with a little za'atar on it, and then we have a little bit of farro tabbouleh. All right, guys, so the next one is like a pounded out chicken cutlet, AKA the chicken schnitzel. <laughs> Someone did the pounding, you know, not that I'm, I'm not bragging about, you know, my, my skills in the kitchen, but I did, I did pound the chicken. Has a little uh, harissa bernays sauce and a Lebanese potato salad. All right, so the last course we have is um, Juniper's date cake, and it's kind of like a toffee pudding, but it has dates that have all been chopped up and, and mixed into it, and it has some candy pecans and a little cinnamon whipped cream. Nice, it's right. beautiful. Thank you for opening your home. Thank you for cooking. Thank you for sharing your time with me. That's Home Life and Style from Wellesley Hills. Until next week, I'm Parker Kelly. Cheers. 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 Cheers.